This is Kevin Mayo. I am your American correspondent for the Real Ale Craft Beer Channel, and this is Pretty Things Cutie Pie. It's actually Pretty Things Beer and Ale Project. It's a double IPA featuring Kohatu, and I could be make, pronouncing that wrong, but Kohatu and Belma hops. I have never heard of either one of those hops before. Did a little quick research on it. Seems like it's uh, kind of a tropical fruity hops, both of them. Uh, Pretty Things is actually, they call themselves tenant brewers. They don't have their own brewery. They will go out and brew in different people's brew houses. Uh, they do the actual brewing, but the brew houses then help them out with the fermentation and the bottle and stuff like that. They're fairly well known for uh, real traditional style beers and ales. They just started getting into uh, IPAs. They did their Metalock IPA. It's turned out to be like one of their best sellers. And so they kind of uh, do a little soul searching and realizing that palates are changing, hops are more prevalent, uh, big hops are more prevalent, so they're trying to brew some things with big hops. So we're going to go ahead and give this a crack. Give it a nice pour here and see what we got in the glass. typical looking IPA. Uh, dark yellow, light orange, just a bit of haze. Maybe maybe it's a chill haze, though this bottle's not that cold anymore. Not a lot of carbonation. Uh, reasonably clear of it in the haze. And we got a finger of maybe just slightly off white head. Let's do the aroma. And you do get a real burst of that tropical fruit. I'm trying to put a, a, an aroma to it. There's a little bit of uh, underpining of the uh, pine there too. Probably maybe uh, tangerine. And there's a little bit of grapefruit there too. It's not overwhelming. Once in a while you'll pour one of these double IPAs and the aroma is just hitting you in the face. It's not overpowering aroma, but it's definitely got the hints of it in there. Let's go ahead and give it a taste. Interesting. It really... Even though that's probably not what they're trying to do, my first thought is a more traditional style English IPA. It's a little bit more malt balanced than most double IPAs. It's 8.2% uh, ABV, so you got to be a little careful with it. I mean, I know we got a 22 ounce bomb in here, but I'm home. I'm not driving, so I don't have to worry about that. You do get a little bit of that grapefruit, mango, tangerine that I was talking about. I think he's probably got a little bit of brewer sugar in the, in the menu because uh, it, it's just got a little bit of a hint of sweetness in the middle. There is some bittering at the end, but again, I mean, you taste it, but it's not overpowering in any way, shape, or form. And again, kind of a bready, malty up front. Then you get a little bit of grapefruit, a little bit of the grass, almost follows the aroma, a little bit of the tangerine. You get some bitter in at the back end, and it's... I'm not sure what the IBUs. I'd probably say maybe 50, 60 in the IBUs. It's probably more bitter than when I mentioned the English style IPA, but I'd almost call this a double English style IPA, which really isn't doesn't make any sense. But I think it's really, really drinkable. Um, it's not going to take on some of the really big floral IPAs and knock them off their perch. I mean, it's not going to knock down Hedy Topper. Um, what is it? The couple I had, the 
the treehouse haze that I had earlier, it just blew my socks off. And, and it's really not that style of beer. It's not going to do that. Very, very, very drinkable. I mean, really nice mouthfeel, really nice flavors. Uh, it has flavor, but it's not pow in your mouth over the top. I want to give us a solid 85 out of 100. Till next time, keep drinking.